Welcome back to the period panel, proudly supported by Active Iron. Hey, it's great to have you on the period panel to have a chat. I know you're busy with football between Ireland and Crystal Palace. How's everything going? Yeah, no, it's gone really, really well. Um, we're about four or five weeks into the season now, so uh, we're undefeated at the moment. So it's been going pretty well so far. That's a that's a good stat to have, and hopefully you can retain it as long as possible. I know. Yeah, we play on Sunday, so hopefully it sticks that way. We keep the fingers crossed. So in relation to being a professional footballer, um, you've obviously gotten as far as overcoming the hurdle of managing having a period and, and menstrual cycle. So I want to take it back to the beginning. Um, do you remember getting your first period? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think I was actually a bit later on. I think I was about 15, 16 that I got my period. Um, I think I got it just when I was in school. And obviously when you're in school, you kind of have a panic. You're like, oh my God, what do I do? Especially because I think I would usually just turn to my mom or something um, at that mm -hmm. time. But I think I just turned to one of my friends. I was like, I, I have my period and like, what do I do kind of thing? And thankfully they had some tampons uh, um, or pads or anything uh, with them. And so they just kind of handed them over. But at that stage, when you're 15, 16 in school, you kind of feel a bit embarrassed a little bit um, when you get it because you obviously don't know much about it. So yeah, it was kind of a bit of a, a strange time. Did you feel that you were a little bit behind other people? Like had your friends already had their periods or why do you kind of mention that you felt a bit embarrassed? I think maybe because I don't think I spoke about it that much leading into it. Um, and so obviously I wasn't aware of a lot of information around it. And I think a couple of my friends did have their period. And I think like you touched on, you might feel like you're a little bit behind in that way. Um, and not knowing any information, you kind of feel a bit like, oh, if you don't know it, you're, you get a bit embarrassed that you don't really mm -hmm. have that information. Um, but thankfully, like obviously I was surrounded by good friends and everything. So they kind of helped me out uh, quite quickly. So in relation to that kind of insight and education, like where did you get it along the way? Um, you know, obviously you've you've managed to figure it out, <laughs> figure it out now. So was it something you kind of eased into quite quickly? And on who were the people that you talked to? Yeah, no, I think it was something I definitely eased into. I think around sports, especially like um, obviously when I first got my period, I was a bit nervous to play sports because um, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if I would leak or if anything like this would happen. Um, and so I think I really touched on it mainly with my friends. I think especially girls that um, that played sports alongside mm -hmm. me, just kind of asking their opinion on it or what they've been doing and kind of learning it from from that way. And I suppose what was some of the advice that you got or some of the maybe advice that you would have for people now? Because I know we try and talk to people from as, as many different backgrounds and as many different sports as possible. And um, like I came from a swimming background, so I'm able to give advice in around swimming yeah. and while I suppose I, I did play a little bit of, um, you know, pitch sport, I don't really remember, um, you know, managing things like traveling to a match or half time, like my main sport was swimming. So I don't know if I just got on with things or maybe it didn't impact me that much because I didn't play that much pitch sports. But from your perspective, obviously, you've been you've been elbow deep in that for, for a lot of your lifetime. So what are some of the, the tips that you have for people? I think for me, when I first played like sports and like you said, on field sports, I think for me, it's just being prepared in the sense of having enough like tampons or pads with you. I think that was something that I needed to like be aware of, because obviously when you're playing field sports, you need to constantly change your tampon. Like if it's mm -hmm. at just before you go out halftime right after. And I think that's just kind of what I was getting from my friends and some of my, my eldest sisters as well. Like just saying, make sure that you're prepared, like having those, like your best friends almost in your paracetamol and everything with you to make sure that like you're kind of dealing with that pain side of it. And I think it's just what I was told is just not be afraid to like to speak up if you mm -hmm. need something, you know, don't like just say you did forget um, like your tampons or your pads, not being afraid to speak up and not like allowing yourself to be uncomfortable, you know, and because you obviously want to be comfortable when you're playing sports because that's when you play your best. Mm -hmm. I think it's just being sure that you're surrounded by people that can help you if you need it. So during like rewinding back to when you're playing like, you know, at school or something like that, um, during halftime, are you like, is there enough time to run off and go to the bathroom? So yeah, there was a little bit of that. I think because when I was played, obviously nowadays that I play professionally and stuff, we go into the changing room, you get your 15 minutes, you get time to kind of do everything. When I was in school um, playing soccer, for instance, like we would be out in the field and it would be like halftime would be on the field. And that's kind of mm -hmm. like really go inside. But at that moment, 
like obviously it's hard when you're younger and you, and just say for instance I had a, a man as my coach it's hard to kind of turn to them and be like I mm-hmm. need to go in because that's a different conversation for like a 15 16 year old um and I know that I definitely struggle with that in a sense but also having people who were also going through that kind of mm-hmm. helped me and I think that's why being on kind of like the team sport kind of helped and I feel like that would be hard if you're on your own we, when you do a sport by yourself like that's difficult but for me being on that field and like my friends were like just ask like just ask the question just say you need to go and like that yeah. kind of having that kind of push kind of helped me to kind of do that in a way yeah 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 no that's that's good like um I suppose that the encouragement is there from your friends it sounds like you're part of a, a really nice group <laughs> yeah. um, in terms of facilities because I know it's something we hear a lot about um again going back to like those types of pitch sports and I know sometimes like look obviously it's expensive to run a club but there hasn't always been like women's facilities available and whether it's like changing rooms or whether it's toilets you know sometimes there are um you know clubs that that literally just have a pitch so when you were playing football um you know growing up was that something that you experienced much is it something that becomes a concern or did you find actually that in the clubs that you were playing against that they did have facilities that were suitable I think the majority of the time I was always able to kind of run inside and go into one of the facilities it was never a case Mm -hmm. where they were kind of like you're stuck outside and this is what you have to deal with kind of thing so I was lucky in that sense there was always a way to kind of even if it was like a quick like five minute run in like you would just sprint in and go in quickly and they would allow you to do that because I think obviously when you're coaching girls you you kind of have to let it happen. You can't just be like, no, you can't go in. So I was very lucky in that sense that like I did actually have the facilities to kind of do mm-hmm. that. Yeah, no, that's, that's good to hear. And and look, it can obviously be different sport to sport and, and, and maybe in football that there is, um, you know, en- enough facilities there for people. But we've definitely heard that. Um, but yeah, that's that's good news, music to my ears anyway. Um, I know before we jumped on the call, um, you had mentioned previously that you think that, you know, periods of menstrual cycle is still a bit of a taboo topic. Can you tell me a little bit more about why you think this? Yeah, no, I think for me, like I have touched on that. I had friends that were supportive and obviously mm-hmm. I have my other sisters and everything like that. But I still think when I was growing up, it was still like a conversation that I, like I said already, that I felt a bit uncomfortable and I feel like, nowadays the more conversations we have about it I don't want people that were that are now 15 16 to feel like that I want them to mm-hmm. feel like they can have those conversations openly and freely because like you said half the population is dealing with this so it's not like something that we should be embarrassed about or anything like that but definitely when I was younger I don't think it was spoke about enough especially mm-hmm. with like the sporting side because that's mainly what I was involved in I don't think it was spoke about like the effects it can have on you as an athlete um, on and off the pitch and so I definitely think that it's something that we need to have more conversations about and that's why I wanted to have this conversation just because I think it opens the doors for younger younger people to feel comfortable about it and where I suppose do you think we should be having these conversations do we need to be having them in school do we need to be having them in sports clubs um do we need to do it at, at both no I think at both definitely I think especially from a younger age like when I played I played at Piedmont United when I was younger um from 12 to about 18 and I don't ever remember having any type of like conversation or having anyone come in and speak to us um, about mm-hmm. it. And I was on an all female team. And I think that would have been very beneficial. I think mm-hmm. all of us would have, <laughs> would have loved having that information. I think maybe that's somewhere that we can kind of have those conversations. If it's like um, athletes themselves going back to their old clubs and having those conversations, that could be beneficial as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's actually something that we do as well as, as we do go into to schools and clubs and, and talk about the landscape of women's sport and touching on um you know periods and menstrual cycle and trying to give advice I suppose to teenagers and on how to best manage them but then also um you know working with parents and coaches to try and understand that perspective yeah. because sometimes it can be hard to put um you know yourself back in in those shoes and, and remember what it's like um do you remember what it was like at, at school like did you see many girls sitting out of PE or did people still engage I think it was a mix. I think for me, like I always kept playing because I think I was in, that was the class that I absolutely adored. So I was like, yeah. I'm definitely not like missing out on this. But like, yeah, there's, I went to an all female school. And so like there was definitely times when, when girls would sit out because they were in pain or their back aches. And mm-hmm. I think teachers obviously were a little bit like, it depended obviously on the teacher, but they were a bit like, okay, if you're in that much pain, you can sit out um, and that kind of stuff. But I do think that sport can help in a way to kind of ease the pain in some senses. Mm-hmm. I know it's quite difficult to start but once you get into it I think it could actually help um the pains and the kind of the back aches and the headaches and that kind of stuff um but there was definitely times when girls would sit out and I think that just there's just a lack of information or knowledge from the 
from the school as a whole to kind of help mm-hmm. in that kind of situation. Yeah, I definitely remember being in secondary school and honestly, I think it got worse the older we got that people yeah. would be like, you know, you had it towards like fifth and sixth year, people were like, oh, I've got my period. And like, we did have a, a male PE teacher in our school. And I think for him, it's like kind of a difficult one because yeah. um, he would just be like, okay, but like, you know, a third of the class or whatever sitting over, um, it could even have been more. And, you know, then you, then you see, you know, people that seem to have their period every week and I think <laughs> some of it is is sometimes used as a bit of an, an, an excuse um to not participate which is disappointing because obviously like movement and, and PE and something uh, is what we should be encouraging girls and students to do and um you know there might need to be adaptations I suppose sometimes in the in in PE in terms of like what we're actually doing like what do we need to do to get girls uh interested and and wanting to participate but sometimes you do see um something like a period being used as an excuse like obviously there are legitimate times where people um are are in pain and are are really uncomfortable but um yeah I think what you're saying there in terms of the education for the the schools and the teachers to try and encourage them to um to to get involved there was definitely a um a female PE teacher she would have been a little bit older when I was in school and and I don't think anyone would have tried to pull the wall over her eyes, you know. Yeah. Oh, there's <laughs> like, those teachers that you were like, no, I'm not going to say it to them. You're like, I'll just partake. You know what I mean? There's yeah, always those yeah. teachers as well. Yeah, but I think it could be something that's really informative actually for the girls as well. Like you said, you know, knowing that movement can actually help, you know, relieve some of the uh, side effects, whether that is a headache or whether whether it's cramps. Um, you know, something like pee, like. I, I really enjoyed it as well like I love yeah. I love PE so it, and you know I guess like I was participating in sport um and was used to I suppose managing having my menstrual cycle um but yeah for for people to like in, in PE it's not like it was hugely taxing you know yeah, it's, it's all yeah. you can like apply yourself as much or as little as you want but you can still get up and move in in, in some respect and um, that I do think that people can you know rein it back if they feel like it's getting yeah. if they're pushing themselves too hard and and that type of thing um I suppose what do you think that we could do um other than maybe talking to the the teachers and the school um around you know those conversations like is there anything that we can do with the girls and um, to maybe encourage them to to get involved in PE a bit more and and you know if they do have their period to get involved but then also not to lean on the excuse of the period and trying to trying to pull the wool over the teacher's eyes no I know no I'd say it's difficult because obviously at that age too like you are quite like um prone to be like if I don't want to do something like I'm not going to do it you know what I mean at that age and like I completely get it because when I get my period sometimes I'm in so much pain and I'm like Mm -hmm. I really don't want to get up for training but then when I get to training and I get playing and I'm doing it you almost like obviously people are different and it doesn't some people actually go through pain throughout the whole session yeah but for me I feel like it eases off and I feel like I actually feel a lot better once I've done the exercise and obviously it's hard because it's the same thing as just having those conversations and talking to them but maybe mm-hmm. it's about getting people around their age to speak to them about it um because maybe it's a bit more relatable rather than having I don't know like the principal of the school or or, or older yeah. people coming in and speaking to them because obviously when you're 16 17 you you do listen but it's also like if there's such an age gap or there you can't really relate to them it's hard to kind of take on board what they're saying as long, if it's mm-hmm. someone that you kind of can relate to it's a bit different you might actually take on what they're saying and and kind of implementing it I think maybe that could be a could be a way to go forward with that. Mm. And I know um the participation levels um of of teens and and of children actually in in sport and in physical activity is actually um you know down quite low and and not meeting the the recommended um you know guidelines of yeah. physical activity. So we definitely do need to be doing something to try and engage students. And I suppose the other thing to try and and try and maybe spread the word is like people say you never regret um you know exercising or going for a run or going to the gym and um, I'm sure there's like a very very few occasions that you might (laughs) if if you like you know injure yourself or something like that you know 99% of the time like you you feel better after you've gone and done something you know no matter how big or small it is so I suppose sharing that message and um you know the value of of a bit of exercise and movement for your overall health yeah no definitely and I think it's just important to also for like young girls to see other girls that pers- participate in sport so I think like for me I think with the Irish team the women's soccer team I think they're doing a really good job of publicizing the team and getting them mm-hmm. like 
visually visually so that younger kids can see them because once you can see it then you believe that you can do it and that's like I think that's the important message and I think it's across the board not just football I think it should be across the board for all sports so that whatever kind of activity a young girl is interested in they have someone to look up to and they can relate mm -hmm. to so I think it's just important to kind of have that across the board and publicizing it and getting people just more like on TV, on radio, so they can just hear it and they can see it. I think that's just so important. Absolutely. And I suppose now as a professional footballer, like what are the kind of conversations or actions that are taken in the team in relation to periods of menstrual cycle? Yeah, no, I think it's huge. I've seen a huge difference. So I've been a professional this my fourth year as a professional. Um, I was in college before that. And I don't think there was that much conversation before I came to England to play. Because um, mm -hmm. nowadays for my club and also for my country, um, we have to log our menstrual cycle. Okay. So we do that daily. Like I have to fill out an app, like not just on my menstrual cycle, but it's for like everything that you're kind of feeling that day um, or injuries or anything like that. But they obviously want to track it for a reason. They want to see like when you're on your period, for instance, because on that week that you might be more likely to injury um, because your coordination is a little bit off. Like you might feel back aches, headaches, and that can all affect you in the way that you're playing. Um, so I've seen a huge like switch almost in how important it is within the professional game um, when mm -hmm. I moved here. Yeah, no, that's really exciting to hear. And I know we would have heard the stories in relation to Chelsea and um, in relation to the, the US women's national team as well um, over the past few years. So it's great to hear that more teams are, you know, deploying this strategy and trying yeah. to support as much as possible. Um, I remember speaking to somebody in rugby um, over the last couple of months and, and they had said when, when they were playing, they are retired now that, you know, in some of those kind of surveys that you're talking about to check in on, on someone's like health and, and well-being and um, that, you know, periods actually wasn't um, in it for a while, like your menstrual cycle was in it for a while. So now that that, that has, has shifted there too so we're heading in the right direction and um, I suppose with that information um are there any kind of strategies or practices that you now put in place to like optimize your performance um during different phases of your cycle or is there anything that you've learned about yourself that you didn't know before I think for me like I think it's more like the fueling correctly leading mm -hmm. up to my period like hydrating making sure I'm eating having more protein and just trying to stay on top of that leading into it because I know that that week I'm going to be feeling sluggish. I'm not going to be feeling 100% myself. Um, and like when you go out to training, I feel like I'm trying to be more concentrated or more switched on, yeah. even though your body actually feels less switched on because you're be feeling a bit sluggish. So I feel like leading into that, I'm just trying to be really on top of my hydration and my fueling and then also that recovery side of it as well. And making sure that you are taking care of yourself after training. Um, and I know that when you're finished training, you might still feel a bit tired and you're like, oh, I just want to go home. But I feel like in those moments, it's just making sure that you're doing like ice baths or if it's recovery mm -hmm. boots or something just to kind of help offset it. Because obviously you're feeling like a little bit down that week. So what it sounds like really is that you're putting all the right building blocks in place, like leading up to your period, preparing yeah. for actually having your period. No, definitely. I think that's, that is through the, um, like I'm learning that through with Ireland and with my coaching here at, at Crystal Palace. And they're just kind of giving me that information being like, if you do these things, like obviously you're not going to feel a hundred percent that week, but like it might help you a little bit. And even that slight, like 1% might make you feel a tiny bit better kind of going in training. And obviously you're going to take that when you're feeling kind of a little bit down. Absolutely. And then in terms of the kind of conversation with your team, like, is it something that is now an open conversation, I suppose, as adults, as professional footballers, or do you still find there's a little bit of awkwardness or taboo around it? No, it's definitely a, a conversation that's completely easy. Um, I feel completely at ease when I'm having the conversation. I think it's just because they know that the menstrual cycle can affect you. Like obviously sports and playing as an athlete, your job is all physical. And so when mm -hmm. I get this kind of period week, like it obviously isn't an injury, but it's almost kind of like an illness in one way because it does affect you so much mentally and physically, you know, like, so I think that they realize that it can affect you and they obviously want to optimize you as a, as a player mm -hmm. because they want to get the most out of you. So obviously they want to know the most about you and they want to give you that information to kind of get the best out of you. So I feel like it's definitely a conversation that's kind of easy to have. So there, I suppose, and um, I guess I was talking maybe about your the other players, but you're talking a bit around the coaching staff. Oh, sorry. Videos, yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything. Yeah, They're no, the coaches. But even the players themselves, like I think as women in, in a professional environment, I think 
especially on my team I'm not sure I can't speak for everyone but it is very like conversation you can have easily and you can tell when people come in they they kind of just walk in they're like oh it's just not my week it's not my day today like I'm feeling it you know and in those situations you kind of have to take it on and in terms of like just say that girl that comes in and says oh I'm on my period and I don't feel great and just as she goes into training and she's not having a great like first drill or first session it's about like at least you know that she's on her period and you can kind of put your arm around her and be like it's okay like you know what I mean we all we all go through those kind of days mm -hmm. and not being like obviously when you're in a team environment you want to hold standards but it's also knowing what people are going through in that moment yeah and as you said like kind of supporting each other and yeah. uh, encouraging each other like it's you know it's it's a cycle you know and, and <laughs> days days will be different and you know it, it comes and swings around about in, in terms of um you know what you can what you can achieve and uh, you have to obviously listen to your body like that's what um you know physios nutritionists doctors will will, will tell you so yeah um you know you don't want to put yourself i suppose in a compromising position where you're you know sometimes overdoing it and, and ignoring um you know the the different signs um but then on the on the other hand um you don't want to be too soft on yourself either like you can get up there and, and do it yeah. um you know we've mentioned there that you know 50 percent of the population have a period of menstrual cycle and, and we all manage to uh you know for for the most part continue about um our, our daily lives and, and, and what's required we're delighted to be working with active iron for season two of the period panel I myself have been taking their supplements for over a year and have had a really positive experience. One of the best things about Active Iron is the fact that it's so gentle on the stomach. So now let's dive back into the period panel. Yeah, I suppose in relation to the Irish kit, um, you know, we've seen that there have been some changes across different teams uh, moving towards navy shorts and green shorts and that. Um, I suppose talk to us a little bit about playing in the white shorts uh, when representing Ireland. Yeah, no, I think... For us, it's obviously, they are our colours. We've always been green, white, green, I think it is, when we play. And I think it's such like a traditional look and it's something that we've all played in for so many years. And I think growing up when I was younger into international teams, like you do worry a little bit when you're on your period, like obviously mm -hmm. white shorts are, are can be deathly if, you, if you're on your period, especially if you're on day one or day two. I think it's something that like... I've almost gotten used to in a sense and making sure that I have like skins and an extra like tampons or anything available. But I think it's definitely something that we're kind of having a conversation about because obviously I know a lot of other teams have changed to, mm -hmm. to kind of darker colors. Yeah. And I suppose something else that's interesting as well is um, the development of like period pants. And I know they have like period yeah. shorts as well. So what you're mentioning there in terms of like skins, like you could actually wear like period shorts underneath your shorts too, uh, which can like add that kind of, I suppose layer of security and comfort for yeah. for people when they are playing, um, which is yeah, it's 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 it fascinating watching all the developments uh, in the space over the last couple of years. Yeah, no, definitely. I know that leading into the World Cup, that was a conversation that um, us as a team had, and I know that they did provide them with the the period shorts and the skins okay. leading into the World Cup because obviously that was a conversation going in leading into it. Obviously, we're going to play in front of seventy thousand people, and you're wearing white shorts. And imagine that's the day that you came on your period. You know, at the World Cup, it's a huge stage. It's not something that you want to be kind of um, focusing on or worrying about. And I know that they did provide us um, with that kind of support if needed. Interesting. Um, and then I suppose kind of on that topic, like, you know, we're talking about changes and conversations and breaking down barriers. Um, are there any other changes that you'd like to see put in place? Um, I suppose whether this is for like, you know, teenagers, adults, um, people that are like just generally for women or, or for within sport. Sorry, do you mean like in terms of like the period, like as in like... Yeah, anything. Yeah, anything related to like period and menstrual cycle, like things that we can change, um, you know, for the better. Um, no, I think like for me, I've been quite fortunate in a way that I in where I've been in terms of coming from to England, like I've been quite fortunate in terms of like having those conversations or having everything available that I needed. And I know that that's not the case for other people. And I know that it mm -hmm. wasn't the case for me when I played underage football, for instance. And I think maybe it is at grassroots levels back in obviously I'm going to speak about Ireland because that's where I'm from, but grassroots levels in Ireland, like having those kind of like tampons or pads accessible to young girls and not making it like you have to kind of source it in a way you know what I mean like as in they mm -hmm. I feel like when you go to a game or when you go to a competition they should be there and they should be available to you if you need them like if you go into the bathroom mm -hmm. they're there not having to be like scramble in case oh my god I got my period and I didn't have these things available you know what I mean so I just think it's important to kind of have them out and about and just being accessible mm -hmm. yeah we're definitely seeing moves I suppose um around that like there's um 
you know, different organizations doing work for, for period poverty. And obviously like um, different period products can actually be quite expensive and it's something yeah. that, you know, we have, but we didn't necessarily ask for. Um, <laughs> but in, in, you know, I suppose when you're, when you're privileged to, you know, be able to afford them, you can kind of maybe take for granted that you, you are, yeah. they are accessible to you. And, um, but it can be something that's really challenging for, for different people. And, um, you know, it, it all does add up. So I know that there's, you know, schools and clubs that are trying to put those measures in place and, um, you know, to support girls, you know, I suppose on the days that they get their period and they didn't expect it, but also maybe, um, you know, the, the girls and women that, um, you know, do uh, experience period poverty and that it's there and that you can remain involved yeah. in sport uh, or not be stressed in school or work or whatever it might be and um, that those things are there to support you well, yeah I was um, gonna say that like just say you don't have um, the accessibility to that you might not play sports and like you were yeah. saying earlier the, the drop off of people doing PE is huge and it actually could be partially because of that yeah absolutely you know what I mean so like if it is accessible then it might bring up the percentages even by a little bit which is what we all want yeah and I suppose kind of on the topic I know there's conversation right now at the moment. Do you think it's something that we should have to pay for? Do you think it's something that we should be, that should be accessible to us? Like it's, it's something that is an added cost, um, you know, yeah. as a woman. Um, and again, it's something that we, that's just like nature and we have to have to get on with it. But there's, there doesn't really seem to be any equivalent from a male perspective. No, I know. And I know, I know this conversation happens. I actually have this conversation a lot with my friends as well. Cause you know, we're, we're all girls and we love having chats about this type of stuff. But I definitely think it should be something that we're just like access, like that's accessible to us. I don't think that we should have to pay fortunes for, cause sometimes things are very expensive for no reason. And like, mm-hmm. as you were saying, it just happens like we we didn't ask for it um so i think it should definitely be something that is kind of like just there and given to us but i'm sure it would be a topic that will definitely be discussed for years to come anyway yeah yeah, yeah no and i i know they're um you know discussing it in different countries and they're trying to put measures in place and and that type of thing and you know obviously it's it's trying to support i suppose the people that can't afford it first um yeah. you know there's there can be millions and millions of women across the across the world and um, so I understand it's costly so money does have to come from somewhere but um yeah it is you know being discussed in a lot of countries and and they are starting to um you know starting to talk about it a bit more and, and seeing how we can um you know support women a bit a bit further yeah. and you know again not something that we necessarily ask for sure. yeah I know um, yeah yeah, I suppose. Um, look, thanks so much for for chatting um to me about your experience and any advice that you that you have. Um, I don't know if there's any kind of final words or, or key moments of uh advice that you might have for for anyone that might be listening. No, I just think for me, um, growing up, I think I wish I was a bit more comfortable and and a bit more kind of had the confidence to just ask questions and kind of just get the answers that I needed. And I think that's just the advice I would have, even though it's 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 easier said than done. Uh, but I think even if you have somebody that you can lean to, if it's a sister or a friend or, or a mother, you know, I think it's just making sure that you ask those questions and not to feel uh, too embarrassed by it, because we all have it at the end of the day. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much and uh, good luck over over the next couple of weeks and months um, with Crystal Palace and um, with Ireland as well. Great to see you back in the squad and uh, yeah, we're excited to see the, the journey that the Irish team will be on over, over the next few months and years as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Period Panel. Thanks for listening. Be sure to connect with Her Sport across all of the social media platforms, particularly on Instagram, because we'll be putting up a question box before we shoot every episode. Our episodes will be a combination of athletes and health experts, and we'll direct your question to the person that's best able to answer. We hope to see you again at the next episode of the Period Panel.